Can you defend yourself with a walking stick? The answer is absolutely yes. How can you defend yourself with a walking stick? We're gonna go over that now in this walking stick defensive weapons video. This is how to use walking stick defensive weapons. We're gonna be talking about four different walking sticks or types of walking sticks. A long staff known as the Japanese bow. This is a six foot walking stick or kind of like a hiking staff. These things double as both. So you can use it as a walking stick or a hiking staff. This is the Joe, which is made popular in the movie or the TV series, The Walking Dead. And I'm sure they'll do a spinoff with the character Morgan at some point. And Morgan in this series learns how to defend himself very successfully using the Aikido staff or the Japanese Joe. The Joe staff, which is about this middle length staff. It comes up to about your armpit. So we're going to talk about the different lengths. I also have for you... So look at when we talk about walking stick defensive weapons, the Japanese Hanbo, which is also the length of a traditional gentleman's walking stick. And somebody just got it in the mail today. It's a beautiful one. Look at this right here. Hello, Richard in Tallahassee. This is the Irish Shillelagh from Shillelagh, Ireland. This is actually from County Wicklow, Shillelagh, Ireland. This is an authentic, handmade, special made for me walking stick. And I can tell you, this is a very effective, especially that big knot right there. See that knot, that big hammer is very effective in self-defense and it's very strong the way all Irish fighting sticks are made. So we'll go over how, why, in a very simple way. I wanna get right into it. And the first reason that you can use a walking stick to defend yourself, how to use walking stick defensive weapons is that you get this reach advantage. So that means if he has a knife or another weapon, if he's a stronger, bigger opponent, you can keep that person away from you by creating some distance. Oh, thank you, uh, Studer. Thanks so much for that $10 donation. That really helps. This creates distance between you and the threat in a very simple way. The second reason using a walking stick defensive weapon is such a good idea, such an effective tool for self-defense, is that it doesn't bleed or become injured. You can't hurt this thing. It has no feeling like your hand, your skin, your body does. You can't knock the wind out of this, but you can knock the wind out of that, out of the threat. You can keep them back. You have a lot of strength. Uh, thanks again, Studer. It's good to see you. The third reason this is such an effective tool for self-defense, the walking stick or the hiking staff is so good as a defensive walking stick weapon is because you will take your natural strength, the things that you have in your hands, and you multiply it exponentially when you're striking and hitting and driving through the opponent for self-defense using your walking stick or hiking staff, or again, the Irish shillelagh, the hanbo, the long Japanese bow, or the mid-size Joe. And I'm gonna talk about each one of these very briefly, but we're gonna talk about principles first. So what's the first principle of self-defense? It's always the same, pay attention to your surroundings. We call that situation awareness. Number two, to get in a better position. Now using the Japanese Joe, or the same thing that Morgan from The Walking Dead would use when he would fight so many zombies, right? He's always sticking it through their head, smashing them. He does a lot of really simple, basic techniques. But the most effective thing that he does is this straightforward thrusting motion. Now, this is going to be the same with all sizes of walking stick. Hiking staff, we were at uh, the Dick's Sporting Goods today looking for some camping gear. We're going to take a short camping trip with the family. We're going to go out in the woods. And uh, we ran into some... Uh, hiking poles, simple hiking poles. So I had to mess around with them. It's been a while since I had them, since the last time I climbed the mountain, opened them up, extremely strong. So a hiking pole is a great self-defensive weapon, a good walking stick self-defense weapon. So from here, I can thrust in this simple position by simply putting it into the backhand. I push my thumb, point it at the threat. It's right there. From here, get it in the backhand. And I can now, by moving my hands forward, and my body at the same time generate a maximum amount of force going right through the middle of the person. Now, the, the next principle of self-defense is what targets can you remove or destroy? Their ability to see, breathe, uh, temporarily, permanently, going in through the solar plexus, their ability to breathe and stand upright, going lower between the belly button and the private parts, that thin fascia of, of muscle to keep your guts in. You go right through there, give them a hernia, they fall straight to the ground. Of course, going down a little lower, but all straight in. Straight, that's the most effective. Someone said it recently on a comment, the old military style 
just jabbing with, you know, fixed bayonets. That bayonet is rapid thrusting right through the middle. That's gonna be very effective. So that's one, the very first reason why you can use a walking stick defensive weapon and it's so effective. Hello to good to see you guys. Now let me show you the difference between the bow and the Joe. And the main difference is obviously going to be length. Now this one's made out of hickory. This is a very heavy, strong, sturdy, nearly unbreakable, unbreak, nearly unbreakable weapon. From here, it's the same basic idea. Point your thumb, thrust. Or if it's in your backhand because you're hiking down the trail, by the way, when you hike, you put it in front of you, you walk to it, you put it in front of you, you walk to it. So let's say you put it in front of you, but you walk to it, now your body's past it. You can't point the thumb because the other hand's in the front. You're gonna lift to here and then simply thrust. And instead of thinking about a rifle bayonet attack, think of a rifle butt strike coming straight in. Oh, good afternoon, Matthew. It's good to see you. Oh, good. I'm glad you got that from Karate Mart. I hope you love it. From here, I thrust straight in coming from the back. Or I can simply switch it and then come in here. But the biggest difference using the bow, the six foot bow, is obviously lots more reach. Meaning I can keep him far back from me, which brings me to the second strike you're gonna use with your walking stick, which is after a thrust, and I say after a thrust because I like you, if you can, if it makes most sense to you, you ask yourself what targets can you remove or destroy, and it's obvious that you should go for a thrust, then the second thing that you might want to do after a couple of hard thrusts is just straight coming down either at this angle across this way or this way using this two-handed position coming down here or up here coming down here or up under the legs up under the chin right coming horizontally here or horizontally here and these are just chopping strikes right chopping down chopping up chopping down at an angle chopping up at an angle, chopping straight through the middle, straight through the middle the other way. But you're simply using two hands to immediately add that to the attack for self-defense after you do your first thrusting motion. Now let's go to the shortest two, and that's gonna be the Japanese Hanbo, or it's almost exactly the same length, I think it actually is, as this beautiful Irish shillelagh from the town of Shillelagh, and I think it says right there, I don't know if you can see it. It's got the name on it, it's got the weapon here. I gotta let somebody in, I'll be right back. But you're gonna pop this one up into your hand either by putting down your hand sliding down the front and getting into this position here or sliding it down the back so that you can come in with the thrust coming straight in here. Thank you, Richard, for that donation. I really appreciate that. You can also bring it in with a hook or use the back to swing through as a fast attack. The same thing is true here on the shillelagh, just picking it up. You can strike in here, strike down on top, and of course, you have the thrust. And the nice thing about that big hammer is that you have something to push through if you're using a single-handed striking attack. Now, the other two simple things that you can do with any size walking stick or hiking stick, when we talk about walk, how to use walking stick defensive weapons, is putting both hands here so that you can push straight back through the target, this hard piece of wood going through soft tissue, teeth, throat, cartilage, eyes, through their glasses, and then striking, hitting here, or again, there with that big knuckle, the big hammer. From here, you can strike fast, striking here, coming down on top, coming down on top with the other side. So you can see they're very effective. The last thing that you can do with these uh, self-defense weapons is walk with them, right? Walk away from the attack, and don't be there in the first place. But if you need one, get yourself in a better position, thrust, angular strikes, and then this basic shoving motion. From here, you can throw in some strikes here, strikes to the body. You can always go down first and try to go for the knee if that makes most sense. That's what I've got so far for you today. We're gonna to do this again later today. I wanna to show you some more things to do specifically with your Irish shillelagh. I'll see you guys in a little bit.